I, you have to be very versatile to speak on a microphone. One that's standing still and the other one you've got to hold so that we get, the, we get the message out. Well, I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for coming. And this is going to be the first in a series of nine family focus and community focus groups that the superintendent is going to conduct over, uh, over the period of the next uh, couple of months. So this is the first. And so we're going to use this as a measure of, of how to best proceed uh, later on. But let me give you a little bit uh, brief background. First of all, my name is Richard Bath, and I'm a professor at LaSalle College, and I'm a former school committee member and a former community schools uh, chairman and a few other things. And Kathy Smith, Superintendent Smith, has asked me to be the chair of her transition committee. So what is a transition committee? Well, when Kathy was unanimously elected to the position of superintendent, which, by the way, was groundbreaking because she's the first woman. Congratulations. Uh, what, what she wanted to do, or what we, we talked about, was not just creating an entry plan, you know, based on what, what we thought. We wanted to create a plan on what you thought. And I think that's the most important thing. So what we did and what the, what the community as a whole did. So we, we created a transition team. We have four college presidents on the transition team. We have three corporate presidents on the transition team. And we have community leaders throughout the city of Brockton on this transition team. So what we did was we divided them up into four specific groups. And we charged them with going out and taking a look at what the district looks like and and we've got them paired up with members of the uh, staff and the faculty here in, in, in the district. Uh, and so they're, they're, me they're meeting uh, together and they've got periodic meetings throughout uh, the next couple of months. So that's kind of phase one and because we want to get as much information as we possibly can to, so that Superintendent Smith can best write a strategic plan going forward for the next five years. You know, where do you want to be? Where, you know, uh, where, what goals and objectives should we, sh should we be reaching? And that's one of the reasons why you guys are here tonight. Now, uh, phase two is the parent forums and the community forums in which we're doing tonight. So we've got a total of nine forums that we're going to do over the next uh, month or so. And this is the first one. So we're going to go to west, we're going to go to east, we're going to go to South. Then uh, Kathy is also going to meet with the Parent, Parent Academy. We're also going to do this in three languages. And everything is going to be televised. This meeting tonight will be aired on Brockton Community Access Cable. It'll be aired on, we'll put it on the, on the, the district website. And I've talked to BCA about the possibility of putting it on YouTube and a few, few others. And the reason why we want to do that is, is that we want everybody in the city of Brockton to understand where we're going to go with the school district. We need to be, have complete transparency. The only way to really understand what it is we want to do is to have uh, input from, uh, from, across, from across the city, from across the cultures. That's the only way that we can do this. You know, the, the, school, the school department, the district, uh, gets funding uh, from the state and from grants, and it totals close to a quarter of a billion dollars. And that comes from tax, taxpayers' money. So what Superintendent Smith wants you, uh, everybody, to see and realize where is that money going and how are we spending it and what is the best way in which we can do that. And so, so you are phase two of this, of this process. So uh, all of the information and all of the comments that you will make tonight will be recorded. We're going to record it now. And then we're going to take everything that you guys have to say and that's going to be part, part of the plan. Now there's a third phase to this as well. And the Department of Education is going to come in and do an evaluation on the entire district. And they're coming in soon, right? They're coming in in November. Well, we thought, what else could happen to us? That's crazy, you know. But you know something? I, the, the Superintendent Smith and I talked about it. We think, actually, it's a blessing in disguise because it's going to be a third source of information. Okay, they're going to come in. They're going to do uh, an evaluation on what the, what the school district does. So, that, so we're going to end up with three sort of um, um, funnels of information here. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to write a strategic plan for the Brockton Public Schools for over the next 
five years. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to share it with everybody. So you'll see the plan. It'll be on the website. It's going to be pre presented to the school committee, we hope, sometime in February. Okay, because it's going to take us that long to, you know, get all of the information. So, and we thought, we thought that this is the only way to do this. You know, most superintendents will, when they get elected, come in and then they just write an entry plan based on what they think the school district needs. So we talked about this, and so Superintendent Smith says, well, we need to go a little bit further than that. It's not just what we think the district needs, it's what the community as a whole thinks what the district needs. And that means faculty and staff, it means janitors, it means the school police, it means uh, business leaders, it means uh, clergy, for everybody from across the entire uh, uh, district uh, coming together to talk about one of the precious things that we have in this city and that is the school district and then the children. And this is all, of, why we do this? It's all for the children. We need a really good educated generation of young men and women coming up to, through, through uh, K, to, K to five, and middle school, into high school, and then eventually coming to see me at LaSalle College in Newton. That's where we would like, and Brockton High School really has, we have quite a few Brockton High School students in, in, at the school. So, and we want to increase that and make it, and make it really positive. So that's kind of the, the lay of the land and the reason why you're here tonight is to help us with this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna introduce Kathleen Smith, the superintendent of the Brockton Public Schools. Kathleen. Thank you very much, Richard. I appreciate that and I guess I'm gonna have to use two mics also. Uh, as Richard stated, this is our first forum in We'll figure this out kind of as we go along. Uh, one of the things we talked about was a walk around mic. I don't like to stay put. So hopefully in the next forum, I'll get to kind of come out and, and speak with you. First of all, thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. I know many of you have busy schedules. I saw you coming in, of course, with the children. And I understand that having brought up two children of my own and uh, a busy schedule. So I do appreciate you taking the time. I want to thank your principal, Shauna Hearn, for hosting this this evening. I know what a busy schedule you have, so I appreciate you being here and hosting our first forum. I want to thank Brockton Cable Access for taking an opportunity to make sure that the word gets out there as we, as the community of Brockton, start to plan for our children's future. I also want to thank Jane Faroli from the Parent Information Center who is taking care of our little kids that have joined us this evening and will keep them entertained so we can have an adult conversation. And I want to thank Maxine Richardson, who is your new director of community schools, my former job, who is always by my side, and, and I appreciate her supporting us this evening in the forum. I also have to men mention my longtime friend uh, and partner here with Community Schools, Ozzy Jordan, who's been part of Community Schools, certainly for the 12 years that I've been involved in Community Schools, and certainly many other things in our Brockton community, and I appreciate your support this evening. I've see, I see friendly faces out there. I see parents that I've certainly seen through Community School programs. Uh, I see some new faces, which is always nice, and it's important for us to have this dialogue as we go forward. I was elected the very end of March, and it has truly been a whirlwind and a very exciting experience for me. And I say that because I have been in Brockton for 37 years. I live in Brockton. My husband and I have lived here for the past 30 years. We educated our children in the Brockton Public Schools, and there is nothing more important, not only to me, but to your district, to the administrators, to the teachers, is that we give our Brockton children the best education we possibly can so they can compete in the world around us. So when we ask you to come tonight, one of the things you see on your table are questions. And I'm sure you've come tonight with some of your own questions. And as Richard has said, as I enter into this role, it is important that I get every bit of information I can from the community, from our civic leaders, our elected officials, I will be sitting with the police chief, the fire chief. I'll be sitting with the faith-based groups. I will be sitting with the community agencies. I'll be sitting with the parents, the businesses, the chamber of commerce, the teachers, the staff, everybody that makes us the school system that we are. And one of the things I just said recently 
was it really does, when they talk about takes a village, you know, we, we talk about if the cafeteria workers on here, our children aren't fed. If the teachers on here, our children aren't taught. If our bus drivers on here, our children don't get to school on time. Everybody is important part of the wheel. And if we don't have our parents involved, our children certainly aren't getting the best education that they possibly can get because you are their advocates. You are the ones that really steer the ship and it's important that I hear some of your thoughts going forward before I start to put together, as Richard said, an entry plan or a strategic plan that does steer the ship for certainly the next three to five years. Now when I say that, if I ask you right now, are you familiar with what the Brockton Public School strategic plan is? And, and, and hopefully I'm gonna get some answers, but what I wanna tell you going forward is when we develop this plan, and it goes before your school committee, those are your elected officials. Every place I go, whether I come to a PAC meeting, whether I'm at an event in a school, I want to make sure that that is shared widely with every group that we meet with. And I promise you it won't be a plan that sits there. It's a plan that we will visit often. We may make changes as we go along because life changes, things happen. So I, it's a plan that I want you as parents to understand fully if I expect you to be partners along this journey. So I think the way that we'll start tonight, you, you've taken the time to come and I've put some questions on tables, but I'd like to hear your thoughts about life in the Brockton Public Schools. So who's willing to start? Okay, thank you. Okay, can I repeat that? Because I'm gonna have to let people know, so on cable. So you are a Brockton teacher. You live in Brockton. Your children attend the Brockton Public Schools. I think you told me that you love teaching in Brockton, and but you do have some questions that you want answered. Or things to share. Okay, okay. so concerns. The two concerns that just came to me, and uh, I'm sorry, your name, your first name? Rachel. So Rachel, you mentioned class size. Uh, one of the things that I will tell you about class size in Brockton is during the past two years, and I want you to think of, let's say, the size of one of our larger schools, and I'm not talking Brockton High School right now, so if you're talking about uh, even the uh, Baker Elementary School or the George School down the street, it's one of our largest schools. We have close to eight, 900 students in a school. It's not quite filled to capacity, but close. So what I want to share with you is during the past two years in the Brockton Public Schools, our community has grown by almost 1,000 students. Now that's across all levels. That's across K through grade 12 in the Brockton Public Schools. Now many communities rely on census information. Communities rely on birth rates. They rely on the sale of homes. And they do what they call as a demographic study. But what's happening in our community is we have many people coming from other countries. And it's been very hard to gauge that. So last year, again, we had close to 500. This year, we, we hit over 500 new students entering the district. And as you can see, we took a school offline. And that school was the Barrett Russell School. Many of you know it as the B.B. Russell School, actually kind of your neighbors here. And we developed from April uh, through September with our own craftsmen, our custodians, our facility department, and brought that back online, completely renovated, and we have close to 300 kindergartners in a kindergarten center there. What that did enable us to do in the district, first of all, we have a big concern. If we're growing, that quickly, we need to really start to address our facilities. And this is something I'm sharing with the mayor, with the school committee, with your city council, with anybody that will listen. And I can assure you that as we develop this facility master plan, we're gonna to have to start to take a look at not only building new schools, taking a look at the schools that we have. Are they in need of renovations? Are they in need of additions? And we can't do this alone. We have the help, hopefully, of a school building assistance fund through the state, hopefully through our own city with some support, but this is an issue we will deal with because by just bringing that school back online and distributing 300 new kindergartners, 
we were able to gain some space in our elementary schools, which lowered class size. So as I look at you today at the school committee meeting last Tuesday night, we talked about class size, and I'm here to tell you that in the lower grades, the kindergarten, the first, the second, we're trying to cap classes at 22, 23 students. And a number of our other schools, our elementary schools, the highest we have is 28 in a class. But it is something that we have a concern about, and certainly you as a teacher, wanting to reach all of the students that you can possibly reach. You know, extra assistance, students that are English language learners, students that have special needs. All of these students need your attention. So it's important for us to watch those class sizes. And I'll say this to you. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to see Boston Magazine. This month, it talked about some of the highest performing school districts in the state. And you're talking the Wellesleys and the Westons and some very wealthy communities. And their class size for grade one were 15 students in a class. So that's what we're competing with. And, and I can tell you it is, it is something that I take very seriously, and I'm happy to hear you say that that was your, your first question. Your other question to me was, uh, previously, uh, Superintendent Malone and your school committee did start to look at rolling back the date of start. So the start date for our kindergartners, they have to be five by December 31st of the year they're turning five. And they had talked about rolling it back month by month. This year we would have rolled it back to November 30th. Another year we would have rolled it back to the October 31st date to the point I think we were looking at a, a September 1st date. And it becomes a cost to do that to the district. Uh, it becomes uh, certainly we're concerned because we want children to be able to remain in school. Maybe not as kindergartners because all the research shows that, oh, excuse me, all the research shows that a certain age for a child uh, to certainly come on board uh, is developmentally better for them at, let's say, starting when you are five years old. That's what the research has shown. So again, if, if we do something like that, we, we were talking about pre-K classes. That would certainly have been the answer, but we're right back to an issue about facilities. So I will tell you that is something that we will be looking at. I'll have to have more information to you as we go along you know, with our strategic planning. But tonight, as you're sharing ideas, just so you know, everything is on cable. We're going to be reviewing all of the forums. And certainly, our transition team is having discussion with people in the community, teachers, administrators, stakeholders that have been invited to the many meetings being held by our transition team. So thank you, Rachel. Other questions or, or thoughts about our district? Welcome to the new people that just came in. Thank you for taking the time. Okay, my friends from the swim program from community schools, you came here to tell me something good or something you had concerns about? What would you like to share? Please, I'll have to repeat what you're saying. Can you share your first name with me? Michelle. Okay, Michelle, thank you again for coming. And your son's name is Sawyer. I remember Sawyer. Okay, let, let me uh, address uh, your question to me is you have two children in the Brockton Public Schools. You're pleased with the school system. Uh, I believe they're twins, your, your children. Uh, your daughter is in the TAG program and she's doing her homework over there dutifully. And your son uh, has special needs. And you're saying that in the summertime, you're, you're pleased with the programs that are offered, it offers him support, but in the summertime, you'd like to find programs where he is able to, you know, be with other children. You're talking probably some recreation programs. So you're looking for that kind of a, a program in the summer. Uh, you know, Michelle mentions an inclusion program. And, So his IEP or his educational plan doesn't necessarily provide for summer programming for him. Right, right. You know, Michelle, it's not the first time I've heard this concern. And, you know, we do a great job in the district, again, of providing uh, swimming programs and recreation programs. The kids do tennis and cheerleading. Uh, they do... Uh, 
basketball and baseball, and I think we did baton twirling this past year. And we, uh, we have si summer camps for science and math and reading. Uh, we do act one, scene one. And one of the things we try to do little by little is I have calls many times from parents, and this had been as director of community schools, and they will share with me, for instance, I'll share one family story. The little girl had cerebral palsy. She wanted to go to mini day fun camp. And she has a typically developing brother, and the parents wanted the two children to go to the mini day fun camp together. And all this child needed, the daughter with cerebral palsy, was somebody to really help her put a swimsuit on and off because they changed from doing arts and crafts to doing some uh, outside activities and then to swim in the pool. You know, and that was a, a situation where we solved it, uh, you know, case by case basis. We were actually able to find a high school youngster. Uh, it was at a very small cost, you know, to the program. It was a great opportunity to support the mini day fun camp. And the child has come back and the parents could not, it wasn't about thanking me, but it was about the child being able to be with every other child and to have that little bit of support that they needed. Um, I, I'm hearing you on this. I've talked to parents about this. Uh, even when you look at our swim program up at the high school, that started because a parent said, you've got great aquatics programs for, for most of the children, but what about my child that has some special needs? And you know that, I can remember the first day of that program. You know, it started with, what, about five kids in the pool? Um, you know, there were some kids, and I'm not sure if it was Sawyer, but somebody wouldn't get in the water. Was that the bucket? Put his foot in the bucket? And, and I have to tell you, the reason I'm sharing this is by the time the summer came around, I was up at the Manning pool, and there he was with his group, swimming in the pool, and both Michelle Zachary and myself, our instructor, we were thrilled to see him there. So, you know, talk about that little bit of extra attention, a program that has been a wonderful program, and parents that feel good about all their children being able to participate. So I think you know where I stand on this. Um, when we talk about things, you're going to hear me want everything I can possibly have for our children. Some of it comes at a cost, but some of it is something that we can't ignore. So again, you know, thank you, and, and I will certainly be paying attention to that going along. Do we have somebody else that can share a question or, or tell me your experience with the schools that something we can do better. Ozzy. Okay, so Ozzy Jordan, I don't mind if I announce you to everybody, has just brought up a, a question that I hear far and wide, and it's a question about diversity, and, and Ozzy asks it in two ways. One, he says to me, you've talked about diversity of our staff, our professional staff in the Brockton Public Schools, and that, of course, is because we have close to 70% minority students, probably maybe more in the district, and probably we have maybe 20%, and that might be pushing it as far as our certified minority staff. That was question number one. And number two, we also have a lot of support staff. You know, custodians, cafeteria workers, paraprofessionals, you know, MTAs, school police, people that support us, you know, as a part of the staff of the Brockton Public Schools, and how would we look to diversify our staff? Interesting because today I had a conversation uh, with one of our school committee members, Bill Carpenter, and you know this is coming to him from a, a lot of people that, that he talks to wh when he's out in the district. And he and I, uh, again, uh, were certainly on the same page when I was interviewed last March. And one of the things that I had talked about, and I know he felt strongly about it, which is why I'm sharing this with you, is that as far as the diversity of our staff goes, when you've heard me speak, and I've talked to uh, Brockton Interfaith, um, certainly in my interview as superintendent, I've talked about it far and wide when I've introduced myself to groups. It is important for our children to certainly be supported by people that look like them. It's important to all of us. Look at our children when Barack Obama became president of the United States. Children actually felt like our children of color for the first time. I can be that person. I can be the president. Same thing with the teacher sitting in front of you. So first of all, I'm here to tell you the most important thing I want is for every teacher that is in front of your child to be a highly qualified teacher and a, child that, a teacher that understands how to teach children in an urban setting. All our children. So that would be number one for me. Number two, one of the things I've said is when I talk about diversity, I had originally heard of plans where people would go to other places to recruit teachers of color. And I thought to myself, you know what? 
that doesn't really make sense to me. Because when I look at our students right now at Brockton High School, our older students, whether you're in an AP class, an advanced placement class, our honors classes, uh, students that are, are on the stage, students that are part of the band, students that are high performing students, we have, again, 70% students of color up at Brockton High School. So to me, what I felt strongly about was encouraging our students at Brockton High by teacher mentors that are there. So for instance, I'm a teacher in a math class. I look at my class of students. I want a grow your own model where we mentor those high performing students. Whether they're minority or non-minority students at Brockton High, those are our students and that to me is a grow your own model. I want to encourage them to come back to our district. You know, how do we encourage them? We take part in future teacher clubs, sometimes from the time they're in middle school, here at North Middle School. From there you go to high school and children start to really figure out what they want to do as they start to apply to colleges. Maybe we look to go to Bridgewater State University, a big feeder program for our staff here in the Brockton Public Schools, to talk about loan forgiveness. We work with Bridgewater, where they go through four years, we continue to have them come back and work in our summer programs where we hire college students. By that grow your own model, they're comfortable coming back to Brockton High, to the elementary schools, to the middle schools. All our students are minority and non-minority teachers, but they're ours. That's a grow your own model. And Ozzy, you and I have talked. By virtue of that, by virtue of the sheer numbers, we'll start to diversify our staff. As far as our non-professional staff, our support staff, one of the things we're doing, and I believe this is written in a policy, that you know, it is a factor that first of all, many times we have residency in a number of our, our unions in the city. Others we do not. So when I talk about residency, look at the residents in Brockton. You know, we, we truly want to start to hire people that reflect how we look in the city. And by virtue of saying that though, I'm going to tell you that the process will be such that I also want the best possible candidate. When I hire a custodian for North Middle School, I want to make sure, and again, we work with our principal. We make sure that the, the staff that we hire is able to do the best job that they can possibly do. So number one for me is the best person in the job. We're certainly looking at our residency. You know, sometimes it's mandated, and we are looking to diversify our staff. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we're seeing changes. Any follow-up or... Okay, your first name? Charles, you have just said a mouthful. So, so let me pot, try to, to share with you what Charles said. <laughs> okay, so, so what Charles said to me was he is a graduate at Brockton High School. Uh, you were on the wrestling team. You, at times, didn't pay as much attention to your academics as, as maybe you should have. And you also started out by telling me that you're pleased that children that need academic support are getting some of the assistance that they need to be better students. You also mentioned, again, having been the wrestling coach, and Mike was one of your, your wrestlers at Brockton High. Uh, you talked about mentoring, how important it was for our young people to have mentors and people to support them along the way. Let me answer that part first and then I'll get into some of the other things you said. Interesting enough, I'm gonna go back to your school committee. Recently you had school committee man uh, Mike Healy out of Ward 6. And one of the things that he talked to me about during a retreat for the superintendent is the idea that up at the high school, you know, we're deficient in the areas of not having enough guidance counselors up at the high school to support young people that, that maybe again are are excited about being on the football team or the baseball team or the wrestling team. And many times they need to be certainly counseled on the idea of keeping the grades up, understanding scholarship, understanding we're not always going to be on a football field, we're not all going to be on the Patriots, but we certainly can learn lessons from that that will benefit us, you know, going on as adults, giving back to your community. And this is something, again, that you know, school committee member Mike Keeley has been talking about for a long time. So the district uh, is, is looking at that and increasing guidance. When you talk about guidance counselors, we have over 4,000 students at the high school. 
and it is difficult when you look at their caseloads, I'm going to tell you they're probably over 500 each. And that's a lot of students to really be able to counsel. Um, and, and what's important about what you said, Charles, is you also talked about the importance you were bringing it down to the middle school level. And one of the things we've struggled with is we have, when you talk about money, and we try to make sure that there are extracurricular activities at the high school with your sports, and remember we have no user fees in the Brockton Public Schools. And I hear loud and clear from parents that you want all children to have access to programs. You know, you don't want to have the haves and the have-nots of families that can afford to pay $250 for a child to play football. You want to make sure that every child has access. And Charles, I'll tell you, I have to thank the Save Our Sports, the band boosters, all of the different boosters, the parent associations that really do support so our children can have what some of the children in the wealthier communities have. Or you look next door at some of our neighboring communities that are charging user fees you know, to their students and their families. When I say that, when you look at our middle schools, we have maintained, I believe, intramurals so that students do have an opportunity. We do have some competitive sports at the middle school level. I don't think we have wrestling at this moment. Uh, I'll certainly take a look, and I might hear on my listening tour other sports that people feel strongly about at the different levels. So again, it is something that we talk about. We work, work with our athletic director and our school committee to make sure that we offer programs for our students. You mentioned health and wellness. We have an excellent health and wellness department in the Brockton Public Schools. Uh, Mary Ellen Karain is our director. Uh, she's been given awards from everything from the bullying policy, making sure we have parent academies and information for parents. Uh, we have nights where I think you're taught good nutrition and good eating habits. So hopefully you take advantage of all of those things. You were mentioning specifically for athletes, and I'll take that away from, from this discussion. So again, thank you for supporting the Brockton Public Schools. These are, these are all great topics, and you can see it's, it's very interesting, the wide range of things that you have brought up this evening. Uh, other questions or... Professor Babb, can we throw something out to the audience? Okay. okay, so Richard has mentioned, who can share with me what you think our school system's core strengths are? What do we really do well? When you look at the Brockton Public Schools, what do you say to yourself, they've done an excellent job with this, and, and this is something we want to maintain, is, is really what I'm saying to you. Can people share with me something you would not like to lose in the system? Okay, the, the comment from Rachel is the, the two-way program, and that's a program that we have at the George School, and that's where youngsters come in at, I think, the start of kindergarten. Uh, youngsters speaking Spanish, that's their native language. Youngsters speaking, in, speaking English, and together they're learning the other languages. They're taught in both languages, and they carry that right through uh, grade five. I will let you know that right now we have something called the District Capacity Project going on. And we're also looking to expand, not necessarily that program, but a similar program. And we're looking to see what other languages we might have a two-way program in, in the Brockton Public Schools. I believe our parent academies, uh, Jane Faroli at your open houses, presently have a survey, where we're, and I think it's on the website of the Brockton Public Schools, where we're asking for your input if you think this is a valuable program for your children, uh, what languages would you like to see taught in a two-way program? I'll tell you that during the spring, I got to visit a school, uh, actually a couple of schools in Milton, where they have a French two-way program. And they were very pleased with the results of what they were seeing on uh, college entrance scores. They felt their children had a distinct advantage by being a part of that French two-way program in Milton, and many times had a waiting list for that program. So please take that opportunity to, to check out uh, our survey presently. What other core things in the Brockton Public Schools do you want to make sure I maintain as superintendent, that it is a priority in my planning going forward? Your first name, please. Okay, so, oh, Shirley. Okay, welcome. Um, Shirley, well, first of all, you know, thank you for being pleased with the Brockton Public Schools. Did you say that you had children in the TAG program? I 
Okay, and when we talk about the TAG, it's the Talented and Gifted Program. And it's interesting because I mentioned to you that I had two daughters that went through the Brockton Public Schools, and there were years, and I, was pro I probably was actually teaching at North at the time. I was a school adjustment counselor here for many years. When I walked in the doors tonight, I actually said to Shauna Hearn, you know, I, I've been around a long time, and I find myself walking into every school and having great memories, having worked in that school. So, you know, North is very special to me. But during that time, we had a lot of budget cuts. And I know that one of the programs that went away was the Talented and Gifted program. Oh, when we finally brought it back because you had parents advocating for those advantages, you know, for their students that, that were, you know, high learners. They were students that were high achievers. They were students that were, were motivated uh, intellectually. And we should also, when you talk about special needs, we pay attention to all children. I'm also a former special education teacher and feel very passionately about every child having opportunities. And if, a if it's a child we need to support with extra help, we do that. If it's a child that we need to accelerate their learning, we should do that. And as I said, during those years, it's very sad to think that we let those programs go. So we're thrilled to have them back. Uh, I believe we have a strand at the elementary level at our Angelo School. They feed into a strand at the uh, Plouffe Academy. We have uh, an international baccalaureate program there. Uh, and also, when you mentioned going up to Brockton High, we just had this discussion last night during a curriculum subcommittee meeting at the high school. And we have some uh, issues to address there with making sure all our children can get the schedule and the electives that they want. You know, foreign language came up. And we were talking about having the middle school TAG program, International Baccalaureate, and then having, uh, we're different than a lot of other countries. And many countries that have the IB program, it actually goes from sixth grade to 10th grade, and then you have a separate, it's called Diploma Program, International Baccalaureate for your 11th and 12th graders. So we're trying to bridge what happens during those two years after they leave Plouffe Academy before they actually go into, if they choose to, the diploma program at the high school. Um, and that being said, we have a number of AP courses, uh, advanced placement courses, where your children have opportunities to take college level courses and not have to take those when they get to certainly a college setting. Having been a parent where my daughters took advantage of that, and when they went to college, what it allowed them to do was when they had a semester abroad, they actually could have less courses so they could do a little traveling and that was because they took advantage of that at Brockton High School. So again, many towns do not sponsor those kinds of programs. We're very fortunate here and I hear you loud and clear that it's all about educating all of our children to making sure, you heard me say in the beginning, we want them to be competitive out there in the society with the children from Wellesley and the children from Weston and the children from Avon and Easton. We want our children to be competitive. Was there another part to that, Shirley? I, I just want to thank you. I am very involved oh. in schools, and I want to say thank you. I know that Brockton is good at all levels. Yeah. 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 You did mention, though, parent communication. You know, we, we will continue to communicate with you every way we can, but the one thing that, that I think we have to admit is, and we look around tonight, and I'm thrilled with the people that came and gave their time tonight, but we should have absolutely had this place filled with parents, you know, demanding some of the things that they want for their children, and making sure that things they feel strongly about are going to be kept in our schools. So that being said, we have a job ahead of us. You know, a job ahead of us making sure that every parent feels comfortable coming into the schools. These are your schools. Your children are spending, count up the hours of where your children spend their days. So I do, as a superintendent, need to find ways to make you feel valued as a parent. And by saying that, I mean wanting to come and assist us in the schools. You know, we want you involved in the PAC. Not just for, for the fundraising piece, which is important. Your fundraising efforts allow our children to take field trips at the end of the year. You know, the Hancock parents right now are out fundraising and building a playground for the children at the school and the children that live certainly in that neighborhood. So it's important for parents to get involved in meaningful ways. As your superintendent, I'm going to tell you, 
as I'm out there, as I'm transitioning, I'm looking for every possible way to meet and greet parents and hear what your thoughts are and how I can motivate you to be involved in the schools. One of the avenues I, I talked about as a new superintendent is to go where the parents are. So tonight we've invited you to come here. This is a place that's, you know, we consider it our home. It's our schools. So where are the places that you go that I need to show up? Do you know, do you go to the coffee shops? You know, should I show up on a Saturday, bring a school committee member along, you know, in a particular ward and find out where you are at, you know, I don't want to say the names of the places, but the places we all, you know, know and love to get our cup of coffee. You know, do I go to the churches, the temples? You know, do I get out there where parents are congregating on a Saturday or a Sunday and ask for the opportunity to speak to parents, to talk about ways, meaningful ways that they can get involved? So I want you to know that I am thinking of these things. Um, if there are cultural events going on, one thing you've heard me say, or, or I know a couple of things I've been invited to, what I have told them is loud and clear, I am your hometown superintendent. I live here. I've lived here for 30 years. So if you invite me to something, I'm going to be there. Friday, I'm blowing the whistle at a fundraiser for the girls' volleyball team. And I think the end of the month, I am a scorekeeper at the, uh, there's a, I think it's the Wizards game with the Davis uh, PTA, or PTO, I think. And they're doing a fundraising event. And I guess I have to learn to be the scorekeeper. I wasn't so nervous about it. But they told me I have to come an hour early to make sure I know how to control that scoreboard at Brockton High. So, and that's a great family night. We want you all to come out there. So when I say that to you, if you have something, and it doesn't just have to be a school-sponsored event. If you're involved in a church, a community group, you know, something that you would like me to come out and speak, I'm more than happy to do it. Please let me know. So let me repeat your question, Ozzy, so the cable audience can hear. So Ozzy has just posed to all of the tables, as we talked about communication with parents, what is the best way to communicate with you? You know, is it by phone? Uh, is it the Connect Ed call? Is it the paper? Is it the, uh, the documents that we translate into other languages for you so you understand what the messages are? So he's asked every table to, to share something. Uh, can I start here with Principal Ahern's table? So, okay, yes. we, we have par so parents, you, you're not speaking English. What language do you speak? Okay, so again, I would assume that you want things to come home in your language or messages to come home in the Cape Verdean language. So, you know, we, we, again, take that very seriously. We want to make sure that there is communication to you. Uh, we have parent liaisons in the schools. We have interpreters in the schools. We, we again, try to make sure that the parents, you know, feel part. And I thank you very much for coming out tonight. Thank you. Okay, well, we're back to Michelle and your table. <laughs> oh. Okay, so what I've heard is the connected message is important because our children don't always bring things home. How surprising. So when we send flyers home, they don't necessarily make it by way of the backpack home to parents. Um, you mentioned the website, and I will have to tell you that uh, Jocelyn Meek is our communication director. She's unable to be with us this evening. She will be with us on the, the next uh, leg of this tour. And she's done a great job, and uh, Jocelyn works alone as the communications director. And it, to me, it's, I always call her the one on paper hanger. It's amazing she gets done as much as she does. One of the things that I am looking at is to start to support that office. And when I say support that office, you're going to laugh when I tell you this. I'm 58 years old. I do pretty well with the computer. I'm not on Facebook. I don't know how to do Twitter, but I want to start doing that, so I start to get messages out to all of you. And by supporting our communications director and looking at the website, I want to start to do some of this social media so it makes sense that you're listening and especially our younger parents coming up. That's how they communicate. So I have to go where they are and make sure that, again, as we continue to, to grow this administration, that this is something that, that is done effortlessly. We also need to take a look at, when you mentioned the website, I want you to be able to go to North Middle School's website, and I'd like to train a teacher here at North, kind of like a teacher leader, that you know your principal supports and that is with the principal every step of the way, and every day could change something on that website. 
So if Principal Hearn wants to tell the parents something going on or something that just happened during the day, it's approved, it's put up there, and you get to see what's happening in a very timely basis. And that takes, again, some extra hands and some support. We also have something called Infinite Campus. So that's our student management system. We're starting to talk about a part of Infinite Campus that allows you to go into a portal and see information about your students, communicate with our teachers. So going forward, this is something that we will start to look at and hopefully, you know, when I'm done, we will have grown the way that we communicate with parents, with social media, with websites, uh, with, with, with any way that we can possibly communicate with you. So, you know, you're, you're telling me things that our transition team is talking about and our entry plan will address. And those of you that, that sat through or listened to my interviews, and it was two nights of interviews back in March, I want to say it was about five hours of interviews, uh, you'll hear that I spoke about these very things. So, so hopefully with the support of you, with the support of a school committee, uh, a mayor, uh, we'll move some of these initiatives forward. Next table. <laughs> okay, well that's interesting. So I'm going to take that to another level. So I have a parent, I'm sorry, your first name? Chris. So Chris said to me, flyers, you know, the, the connected calls, um, and she said, I'm not sure how to work a computer. So I have to say to you, as a parent in the system, if we offer classes for parents, is that something you take advantage of? Okay, so it is something you'd be interested in. And again, is that something we do at every school rather than, you know, if, if your school or your section of the city is, is, let's say, north. So many of the classes we have are up Brockton High. But maybe this is something we host at a North Middle School, invite parents, and we could do this through community schools. You have the director sitting down there right now. And I know Maxine is looking at, you know, how do we get parents out in an affordable way to take part in some of the wonderful opportunities that we have out there. And both Maxine and I remember years ago when we first had Brockton High opened and community schools came in in what, 1970? The way that we sold it to the taxpayers, you know, we had the new Brockton High, but every one of our schools told the taxpayers we wouldn't close those doors. And you had activities going on in every one of the schools for parents. And parents came out. There wasn't a parking, parking spot out there at night, you know, many different nights, Monday through Thursday, uh, activities for parents to make sure that we're educating all of our population. So I'm glad that you said that, and, and, and hopefully, if we can start to do that for parents, I'm sure you're not the only one, Chris. So thank you for sharing that. Charles, we're down to your table. So communicating. Maybe one of the things we can do, um, well, first of all, you did mention to me for communication, flyers, or I haven't been out to the coffee, sh well, I'm out to the coffee shops often, but I'm a tea drinker. Uh, but I ha you know, when I talk about the coffee shops with school committee members or the churches, it is something that I'm looking to do, and I'm looking to be invited to wherever you think I should go. That, that would be great. <laughs> I think what, when you start to mention, and it's really interesting, when you mention again, you're right back to, and I agree with you, it's important for our kids to know health and wellness, and maybe what we do is have a night for the athletes. You know, is that something we do with our athletic director and our trainers? You know, to invite the athletes. We do Parents Academy for parents. Why not do some kind of a training after school hours where we talk to our athletes about scholarship? We bring in somebody to talk about wellness and health. We talk about fitness. We talk about, and again, it's important for us to understand. You know, we, we know as I stand here, there are some concerns out there with young people. You know, you open the paper and there's, you know, some, uh, some new drug out there. I, what was the last one? Molly? You know, I, did, I have no idea what that was. So, again, it's important for us to stay ahead of the curve and making sure before somebody else is educating our children in a negative way that we're making sure that the message is out there. One of the things I'll tell you, uh, as many school systems have experienced, when you talk about bullying, you talked about the sexting issue. It was something that, that we had happen. And I said to them, you know what, we're going to be proactive about this. And as I stand here right now, I've talked to our director of wellness, our communications director, uh, Jane from the Parent Academy. And we're trying to put something together at Brockton High so we can start to educate parents of every age, our elementary, our middle, and our high school, 
to make sure that you understand what's going on there and how we need to be watching what our children are doing with social media, things that, that they don't even realize are implications that could last a lifetime. So this is something we're planning probably for December, maybe into January, but we want to be proactive. We don't want something to happen and to hide our heads in the sand. We want to get out there, uh, bring the uh, school resource officers on board, the Brockton police, you know, to share with the parents how we can make sure that our children remain healthy in every way. So thank you for that suggestion. Okay, so, so when Rachel started to answer this question about communicating, and she started to talk about the grocery stores, I thought she was going to say to me, if you go to the grocery stores, you will see the parents. Well, well, you will, and I'm going to tell you a funny story. Back a couple of Saturday nights ago, I truly was leaving work, and I was up at the Shaw's supermarket on the west side. I live down in that area. I had to run in and get a few things. And I walked by two little boys, and it was a big brother pushing his little brother in the cart. And, and as I walked by them, I heard the little boy say something to his mother who was approaching the cart. And, you know, not being in the classroom, you really don't think many kids really know who you are. So I turned around, and I looked at the little boy, and I said, do you know me? And he got all excited, and he said, you were just in my classroom, and my teacher's name is Miss Donnarumma. And thank goodness I know Miss Donnarumma. And it had been a teacher at the Kennedy School, and it was right when school started, and I had done a walkthrough that day. And you know what was great about that? And I went home and told my husband this. I introduced myself to the mother, and I said, I'm the new superintendent of schools. I'm Kathy Smith. And I said to her, what do you think of the Brockton schools? And she and I had a wonderful conversation in the supermarket. So actually, I know your suggestion was different, and Rachel talked about you know, flyers, and this is something with community schools, we do a lot of advertising. We'd had a 40th anniversary a couple of years ago uh, with the Brockton High School and community schools, and that was one of the suggestions was to get a flyer in the bags of the supermarket, and actually the supermarkets are pretty uh, responsive uh, many times when we have requests. Um, you know, I, again, as I start to get more comfortable I'm going to talk about doing newsletters, and you heard me talk about social media, getting things up on the website so I can share with teachers and staff and parents some of the day-to-day -day things that are going on that I think you'll find interesting. Parents might have found that story interesting, and another parent seeing me in a supermarket might not have avoided me and might have had a conversation with me. So those are the kind of things that I'll try to communicate with you, but another great suggestion, no, Professor Bath. <laughs> Well, let me share that uh, Richard Bath just said when he was a member of the school committee and did his shopping, and I don't know what, I probably, I'm sure you shopped at many, many stores, I'm going to say here. Okay, we have many supermarkets in Brockton, by the way, and I shop at many of them. Um, what he said was that, again, he would take time and meet with constituents because that's where you run into people. It's like a, a social gathering. Uh, I have called my office when I'm leaving to let them know I'm on my way, and I told you I'm a tea drinker, I stopped for that cup of tea. And 45 minutes later, I'll show up in the office and they'll say to me, where'd you go? What happened? And, and it is amazing to me that people know who you are. You know, they'll come up and, and they'll say, you know, are you the new superintendent? Are you from the schools? And that's really valuable conversation for me. To look at people, to talk about the schools, to find out what they think. Um, you know, it, it's important. You know, I take the job very seriously. And one time I remember somebody saying, that, you know, the way that they would do the job was it, it's difficult to, to constantly be interrupted. And, and I'll tell you, when I had my daughters, and they were very young, and I was just a teacher. I was a teacher, I can remember, at East Junior High at the time. And I remember somebody complaining about shopping at the mall, that they were always interrupted. You know, students that you had for how many years, you know, they would come up and see you. And one of the things I took very seriously, if a student came up to me, and those were the years that, again, you have a lot of students. And they would say to me, you know, Mrs. Smith, do you remember me? And many times, I mean, they could have been children I just had in a study period. Maybe they were children that knew me from being in the cafeteria and doing cafeteria duty. And I always made sure that I said to them, I do remember you. Please share your name with me. And they would gladly tell you their name. So now you're talking on a first name basis. I would always ask them what they were doing ask about their family, whatever my, my level of involvement was with them, and they were as happy as can be that you as their teacher thought enough to take, what, a couple of minutes to have a conversation? 
and I can still remember my own little daughters, you know, grabbing at me because I'm sure they wanted to head on to do something else and had very little patience. But to me, it was important. So understand that if I am out there publicly, please stop me, please say hello, please share your concern, please be respectful, and I would love to have that conversation with you. Okay, I'm sorry, what program were you talking? Oh, our program, I'm sorry. Well, okay, we, we certainly have, okay, let, let me take art in the district. So we do have uh, a K-12 to a director of art. Um, they meet uh, on a pretty regular basis with the teachers. We do have some professional development. You're asking, of course, about the curriculum. We do have a curriculum in the system. Are you finding that there's real differences and that's... No, no, it's not. It's a, it's... Okay, so Michelle is sharing with us a concern where, uh, and we used art as an example, and we're talking about curriculum, where uh, a child went to one school and would come home with projects that were pretty innovative, um, and, and other projects at another school that you really weren't sure about. Maybe, maybe could have been done a little bit better, and you're asking about following a curriculum. Um, that is something that, you know, we're right now changing over to what they call the common core. And we're busy working, uh, we're busy changing our curriculum, where uh, as, instead of changing, I should probably say aligning our curriculum. And it has been a discussion among the principals, and I'm going to put Mr. Hearn on the spot a little bit. Um, as we talk about that, we want to give certainly some autonomy to the schools, to make decisions about the students in their schools, and to, you know, to, to support their teachers, to, for their professional development, because the bottom line is, Mr. Hearn is accountable for the success of the students at North Middle School. And of course, he's supported, hopefully supported by all of us in the district, at central administration, all of our department heads. You know, but that being said, there is talk about what happens when a student, and this happens to many of our students, you know, somebody leaves North Middle School and they go to East Middle School. You know, is there continuity in the math program that they're doing or the English language arts program? We have what's called curriculum mapping, where we, again, share with our teachers where we expect our students to be. I'm not going to say they're using all of the same curriculum. Many times they work together in professional development to uh, design curriculum that they go back to their schools and use. Uh, Principal Ahern, would you like to, to share some thoughts on that? So at each school, we have to uh, meet the standards for the students. And, um, and at different schools, there's different resources to meet those standards. And um, the teachers sometimes um, use uh, certain um, resources that other schools don't have. Um, so so for, say for math, um, there's the curriculum, there's the, the frameworks. And um, right now, North is piloting uh, a certain uh, book to help as a resource. Um, other schools are piloting other books. Um, we're tr really trying to find, with this new Common Core, what's going to work best for our students. And as um, Superintendent Smith said, each school is different. I have a lot of English language learners at my school here, so we have to use different resources to meet those students' needs. Thank you. Um, but again, Michelle, you bring up a question that is not new to me. And it's talked about with parents. It's been talked about at school committee. And as we continue to, and I'm also, I'll be very honest with you, I'm looking at what's called an organizational chart for a superintendent, you know, to make sure that we have curriculum directors that are out there able to support our principals, able to make sure that we get data from all of the schools to eventually, you know, make decisions. And the more common we have materials, the better it is for us as a district, because we're all marching in the same direction also taking into account the needs of a certain population at a school or at a school level. So thank you for bringing that up. And, and you brought it up under art. That's interesting. And, and that's something that, that you would notice. How about when you talk about, you mentioned art, how about our programs, our music programs, our phys ed programs, our support programs? Are, are there any thoughts on the programs in Brockton? Our language programs? Uh, And I'm hoping you're going to say that because, you know, when we talk about art, you go up at that high school and by the time they get to high school, you know, children are starting to, to feel where their strengths are. And those children that are creative and want to go in those areas of art have great opportunities there. 
We have art shows sponsored by, I believe, Harbor One sponsors our art show. I, I am amazed whenever I go up there. It's not, I'm not much of an artist at all. So I'm not just talking about you know, paintings. I'm talking about sculpture. I'm talking about fashion design. I'm talking about woodworking. Uh, it is amazing to me what our children are able to do. You know, are we able to improve on that? You know, we certainly are. You look at our musicians. Many of them have opportunities for scholarships to, to you know, high-ranking colleges, you know, because of their involvement in our band. We have advanced band. We have wind ensemble. We have jazz bands. We have a marching band. Uh, the other day I was at the football game, made sure I got there in time to see the halftime show, because I always tell everybody, at 22 years old and a new teacher in Brockton, one of my favorite jobs was coaching the cheerleaders at Brockton High School. And I take that halftime show very seriously, but you know, I loved watching the football team, our athletes, and to watch our band out there, I don't know if you've seen the halftime show this year. Not only are they out there with the halftime dancers, and you have the, the flag holders in the band, and you have the majorettes, the band is out there dancing. They're synchronized. It is just an amazing show to see. And all the hard work that goes into that, not only are they a part of something, they're, they're part of something that was great. The night I was there, Catholic Memorial was the team they were playing. And their group of cheerleaders came over to watch the band, and, and they were in utter amazement as to what this large city, urban school district could do. And they kept saying to me, they should compete. You know, they should be on TV. They should. So we're really proud of all of the extras that we have you know, for our students. And, and this superintendent, again, will make sure that those things continue for our children. Uh, it looks like we're coming to the end. Does anybody have any final questions? Michelle asked the question, was it about curriculum, sir? OK. OK, um, again, it, it looks like we're wrapping up for the evening. Uh, I thank you uh, for the honor of serving you as your superintendent of schools. I promise you I will be in the schools as much as I can, making sure that I see your children, that I understand what the needs of your children are. And I hope your promise back to me is you will continue to give me feedback, you will get involved as much as you can, and you will support you know, our school district going forward. So thank you.